In this short video, we're going to discuss how to get the distribution function of the sum of two independent when variables. So we're going to discuss how to get the cumulative distribution function of the sum, how to get the density function of the sum, and also we're going to discuss the examples of, of the distribution function of the sum of the two independent random variables for specific cases, namely for the uniform random variables, for the exponential random variables, and for the normal random variables. So first of all, let, let me show you that we can find a cumulative distribution function using this formula, the density function using this formula, and please note that the cumulative distribution function means that this is the probability that our random variable is less or equal than this number or constant, this argument z. So we can find its probability by integrating the density function of the random variable x in this range, right, from minus infinity to the z. And using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we can find the density function by taking the derivative from the cumulative distribution function. So let's start deriving the cumulative distribution function of the t independent random variables x plus y. So the cumulative distribution function is the probability that this random variable x plus y is less or equal than the z, which we can be obtained by double integrating the density, the joint density function of the x and y, and the range of x plus y is less or equal than the z. Right? So since x and y are independent, we can write down the joint density function as the multiplication of the marginal density functions of the x and y. So now I would like to split this integration into the two, or basically I would like to define the borders of the both of the integration. In order to do this, I need to figure out all possible values for the x and y so that their sum is always less than z. So in order to do this, so let us consider a small set of codes. So let's say we're given the equation x plus y is equal to the z, where z is some constant, and I would like to find uh, all possible solutions x and y. So in order to do this, the so idea is to fix one value for the y and we can find the x by subtracting the y from the z, right? So in order to find all possible solutions, I need to generate all possible values for the y, then we can find the x by subtracting the y from the z and we can print these solutions. Now, if we would like to find the all solutions for the inequality where x plus y is less or equal than the z, then the idea would be to fix some value for the y and generate all possible values for the x so that x will be always less than z minus y, right? So we're going to write the two loops. y is going from minus infinity to the plus infinity and x goes from minus infinity to the z minus y where the value of the y is taken from the outer loop. So this idea I'm going to use in order to define the borders of this integration, right? So the density function is written as a multiplication of the two marginal functions, and the y changes from minus infinity to the plus infinity, and x changes from minus infinity to the z minus y. So please note that this integral gives me the cumulative function for the x, right? So I can write as the cumulative distribution function of the x, in the argument, I need to take the z minus y, right? Because this is, I'm integrating the density function from minus infinity to the z minus y. So this is the formula of deriving the cumulative distribution function of the sum. And this distribution function is called the convolution of the distributions of the fx and fy. So now, if I would like to get the density function of the sum, I just need to take the derivative of this function with respect to the z. So so this, since I'm integrating this function with respect to the y, I can take the derivative from the function which is inside the integrand. So this will be the derivative of this function, and we know the derivative of the cumulative distribution function is the density function of the uh, x, right? Multiplied to the derivative of its argument using the chain rule, which is equal to the 1. So we've got a formula finding the density function of the x plus y, like this. So now let's consider an example. Exam, an example. So let's say we're given t random variables with uniform distribution between 0 and 1. Then the density function of the x will be equal to the 1 if the argument is always between 0 and 1. And the density function of the y is equal to the 1 if the argument is between 0 and 1. Otherwise, the density functions are equal to the 0. Then, using the formula, the sum of the random variables is equal 
to this one. And now I'm going to fix the region for the y, right? So this density function is equal to the y unless the y is changing from minus uh, from zero to the one, right? So that is why this formula simplifies to the, in this form. And now this density function is equal to the one unless its argument is between zero and one. Otherwise, it is equal to the zero. So let me find the values for the y when this will be satisfied. So for the values of the y between z minus 1 and z, uh, this argument z minus 1 will be always between 0 and 1. So obviously this is not always between, so I need to put the extra constraint for the y as well because y should be always between 0 and 1 as well. So in order to do this I'm going to split the values for the possible values for the z to the two intervals. One interval is when the z is between 0 and 1. In this case, y is going to change from 0 to the z because this part will be always negative, right? So we cannot choose the negative values. Then this integration simplifies to the form of the integration from the 0 to the y. y changes from 0 to the y, to the z, sorry. And the density function becomes equal to the 1, right? So after the integration, we'll get a z. And the second interval for the z is when z changes from 1 to the 2. Then for this inequality, so the right hand side part will be always more or equal to the 1. So that is why I'm going to fix this to be equal to the 1. Otherwise y will be more than 1. I cannot choose the y more than 1. So that is why this integration simplifies to this form. So the integration of the density function of the x which is equal to the 1 in this range from z minus 1 to the 1 and after this integration we will get this function. So if you draw the density function of the x plus y with respect to some variable z, it will be the triangular formula. So in the region between 0 and 1, this is the line. And in the region between 1 and 2, this is the line which is going down. So in order to illustrate this, so let's do some simulations in the R. So do you remember, so if I just run this command, run uniform, it is going to give me one random value between 0 and 1 was the uniform distribution. The idea is to generate a lot of random variables and find the, their sum and find the distribution of the sum, right? So let me say so if I just generate two random numbers and if I sum them I will get some value, right? So I would like to know what is the distribution of the sum of the two random variables, right? In order to do this, we need to do a lot of experiments and need to see what is the histogram of the sum, right? So in order to do this, let me uh, declare one array. So x bar is going to have like 10,000 zeros. Then in, inside the loop, i goes from one to the 10,000s. I'm going to generate like a random variables and I'm going to save their sum on the i's uh, uh, position of the array. So this is run uniform one means like it generate me only one random variable value plus run uniform one. And at the end, I just need to draw the histogram of the x bar was the probability is equal to the true, it's going to draw me the density function. If you make this false, it's going to draw you the frequency function. And I'm going to copy and paste this here. So I've got the, the density function of the sum of the two independent random variables with uniform distribution, which is exactly which we've got theoretically, right? So when the argument changes from zero to the one, its function is like a simply z, when the z changes from 1 to the t, it is t minus z. Okay. So now let's consider an example of the sum of the t independent random variables with exponential distribution. So let x and y have the exponential distributions, and I would like to find the distribution of the z, which is x plus y. So the density function of the x will be equal to the lambda e in the power of minus x lambda, where pos for positive x's and the distribution function of the y will be similar with the y here for all the positive values of the y. So then the density function of the z, which is x plus y, can be found using this formula. I'm just going to substitute the density function of the x and y, and please note that y should be here always 
positive, right? So I can take the, I cannot take the y to be negative. Then by substituting this, and I need to so just open up the powers of the exponential function. And once they open, this y lambda and y lambda will be canceled. And I will have this function, which doesn't depend on the y. So that is why the integration of this function with respect to the y, it will be simply y. And if I put the values from 0 to the z, I will simply get the z. So this is the density function of the sum of the two independent variables with the exponential distribution. And last, I would like to find the distribution of the sum of the two independent variables with the normal distribution. So let's say we're given two random variables with the standard normal distribution mean with the mean is equal to the zero and with the standard deviation is equal to the one. Then the density functions are given correspondingly like this. And if I would like to find the density function of the sum, I just need to put everything to this formula, right? So I'm going to substitute the density function of the x to here, the density function of the y to here. And here I would like to just open up the powers of the exponential and let me simplify them in order to bring them in a more comfortable form. So if I just open this brackets and this brackets, and if I sum, I will get this term. Now I'm going to regroup the terms, like the y square over t minus y square over t is going to give me y square. And I'm going to split this y square over t to the y square over 4 minus y square over 4 because I would like to write this term as the y minus z over t in the square. So now this formula becomes in this form, right? So I can take out this exponential out of the integration because it doesn't depend on the y and I will get only this term. So I would like to multiply this term to the 1 over square root of pi because I would, so I would like to bring this to some form. So then since I divide this, to this function to the square root of pi, I'm going to multiply this to the square root of pi as well. And please note that this is the uh, equal to the 1 because this is the, uh, again, the normal distribution with the mean z over t and the standard deviation 1 over t. Right? So we know that the integration of the density function of the normal distribution from minus infinity to the plus infinity gives you 1. If I substitute the 1 to here, I'm going to get the density function of the sum of the two random variables in this form. And note that this is again the uh, normal distribution was the mean um, was the mean 0 plus 0, which is 0, and was the standard deviation 1 plus 1, which is equal to the 2.